Hey guys, this is Matt Perez with Converge, and this is our fourth video in our parametric series. Now, so far we've covered global variables and linked values in the first video. We talked about the application of those and using a construction reference line to drive a curve different pattern in the second video. And in the third video, we talked about using equations in the background to drive the exact same pattern without using all of those sketch references. We also saw, based on the performance evaluation, that the application of a curve driven pattern in a simple linear case like this actually takes a little bit more time to rebuild than evaluating the equations in the equation manager. So in this video, we're going to talk about the same process again. However, we're going to do a little bit more in terms of programming in the equation manager, talking about if else statements and figuring out how many pattern instances to go across a distance, assuming that we have variables such as box length and box width and so on. So to get started, if you guys have not modeled this part before, that's okay, but I highly suggest you take a look at those first two options before moving on to this video. If you're starting here, make sure that you go into your equation manager and you build the values box width, box length, box thickness, whole diameter, whole edge offset, whole number, and the whole pattern spacing that we used before. You won't necessarily need all of these, but we will need to talk about them a little bit. So next we want to start a new sketch on this top face. And again, we're going to create a hole just like we did before. And this hole is going to be the diameter that we specified. It's going to be half inch. We're also going to give it a distance from both edges based on our whole edge offset. And you could also use construction lines, set them equal and only use one dimension here. But because these are all linked, it's really not going to change the overall concept that we're dealing with here. So now that's a fully defined hole based on our parameters for hole edge offset and diameter. We're going to go ahead and just do an extrude cut through all again. And now we want to figure out how to pattern this equally across this based on number of instances and spacing that we have to decide. In order to do that, let's go into our equation manager. And let's take a look at what we've already created. So we know that we have the box width value. We know that it's 20 inches and anytime this changes, it'll automatically update the plate. So we're going to need that to help determine the overall length. We know that we have the whole edge offset. So our total length is 20 inches and we're going to subtract the whole edge offset from both sides to make sure that our whole pattern is equally spaced from both edges. We know that we have this whole num value. It's currently set to eight and we have a whole pattern spacing that we used to create equal spacing across the board based on some of our parameters. But now we want to add intelligence by using an if statement to determine how many holes we actually want to go across the pattern. So in order to do that, I'm going to say whole pattern COND for conditional. And to start to drive this, I'm going to start to type an if and the equation will pop up here and I can click on it it automatically places an if statement with parentheses. Now, if you haven't used if statements before, it's pretty straightforward, but it is a bit of a logic that we need to understand. It's looking for three conditions. The first condition, it's checking to see if it's true. So if we have the global value, whole number, and we say that if whole number equals eight, that condition is true. We're gonna put a comma, so if whole number is equal to eight, then we want this value to be 10. Else, the third condition is if whole number does not equal eight, we want this value to be something else. And let's just say six. So this evaluates to 10 because whole number equals eight. However, if I change that value, it's gonna change its value to six because this is a conditional statement. It's checking to see if the first statement is true if it's true, it'll evaluate to whatever the second item is in the if statement. If it's false, it'll evaluate to the third. Now there's also more logic that we can build in here with what's called conditional if statements, where if you put an if statement inside of an if statement, you can keep this going for a while. It gets a little complicated, but ultimately, if it's not just a simple yes or no answer, you can add a little bit more intelligence by doing these nested if statements. And the equation manager will handle them just fine. It gets a little difficult because you will probably need to stretch this thing out to see your entire equation. But for the most part, it handles it fine. You just need to plan it out. So we're gonna remove all this stuff I just typed and we're gonna start again. 
I do want to note that it changed the IF statement to IIF, which stands for if and only if. So this conditional statement, again, it's the same process. It just changed the nomenclature a little bit. Also do note that under functions, we do have several other things, such as absolute values, uh, log square root, integers. So there are several other things that we can put in here. But really, the if conditional statement is the one that we're focusing on. So inside of this statement, we want to determine how many whole numbers we want patterned across the board. And we want to determine that by the width of our box. So our first statement is going to be if box width. And we can determine whether or not it's equal to, whether it's greater than or less than or not equal to. So let's say that currently box width is 20. Let's say that if box width is greater than 10 inches, so if the box width is greater than 10 inches, we want to have eight holes. We want to have the number of holes be eight. However, if it's not greater than 10 inches, so that if it's 10 inches or less, we only want five holes. So right now that's going to evaluate to eight. If I set this number to 10, it drops down to five. If I set this number to 11, it goes back up to eight because it's looking at exactly at 10, anything that's over 10, 10.01 is over 10, and it'll make eight. If anything is less than 10 or equal to 10, then it'll be five. Now there's more that we can do here in terms of, again, formatting using these nested if statements. So right now, if the box width is greater than 10, then that value is going to be evaluated. So as, as soon as it's greater than 10, we can add another if statement in the second condition. So if box is greater than 10, which is completely fine, and the next one will do if box width, and I'm going to start typing this in, you can also, again, use a drop down. If box width is less than 20. Now, keep in mind that we're in a nested if statement. So we need to take care of all three conditions inside of here. So everything that we're looking at in this conditional statement only happens if the first one is true. If box width is greater than 10, then we're going to go into this if statement. This if statement says if box width is less than 20. So if that is true, if it's less than 20, we want to have eight instances of the pattern. However, if it's greater than 20, we're going to go up to 12. We're going to close off that if statement and then put a comma in here to carry on the rest of this if statement. If you haven't done any of the syntax correctly, you won't get the green check mark here. Let's go ahead and say OK. And it says that we have incorrect syntax here, which means that I have an additional statement or, or something extra is in here. So I need to remove that eight and that extra comma, hit the green check mark, and now it applies. All right, so let's take a look at this one more time. Let's make sure that we understand exactly what's going on. Inside of the if statement, the first condition before the first comma is if box width, if this value up here, is greater than 10. So if that's true, it moves on to the second section, which is this entire other if statement. This is a nested or conditional statement. So if the first one is true, if the first one is greater than 10, which it is, it's set to 11, it'll go into that second if statement that says if box width is less than 20. So it's looking for a range here. If it's greater than 10 but less than 20, it's going to evaluate to that second statement in the second if. So that means it's going to be 8, which is true right now. However, if it's greater than 20, it'll be 12. And then ultimately, if it's less than or equal to 10, it'll be 5. Now let's test this out. If we make this equal to 10, it changes this value to 5. If we make it equal to 20, it changes the value to 12. If we make it something between, let's say 18, it makes it 8. And we can see that application across the board. Now let's link it to something. We're going to do a linear pattern along this bottom edge, using that as our direction. The feature is the third cut extrude. And then we want to set up the pattern spacing and the number of instances. To this point, we haven't really dictated what the spacing is going to be. We've only talked about the number of instances. So let's go in here and let's say equals global variable and whole pattern conditional and say OK. We still need to address what the spacing is going to be for that as well. And we're going to come in here and we're going to say equals 
whole pattern spacing, and OK. Now keep in mind, the whole pattern spacing is not intelligent in the fact that it's not looking at the number of instances. So we're going to go back to our tools, back to equations, and we're going to make one more conditional statement here. Right now, our whole pattern spacing value is based on whole number, but we really want that statement to be based on this whole pattern conditional. So we're going to control C and copy that, and we're going to say whole spacing COND for conditional. We're going to copy it. However, the whole number section, we're going to change this to be whole pattern conditional. If you type this incorrectly, it'll stay red, but however, if you type the name exactly, it'll turn blue, and we know that's okay. So it says here an equation cannot have an equal sign on the left-hand side. Because I copied and pasted it, it had an extra equal sign. Once we remove that, everything's okay. Now we can go back in, we'll double click on this pattern, and we'll take a look at the spacing value. We're gonna double click on the spacing, click on the globe icon, and we wanna change what this is linked to. So I'm going to say equals, and I want to change it to whole pattern spacing conditional, and say OK. And then I want to rebuild this document. So now if we look at this, we can see that we have more whole patterns spaced across this plate. Let's open up our equation manager. Let's go ahead and let's move this so that we can see it. Let's go ahead and fit to screen. Let's move it so we can see it. And again, open up our equation manager, and let's modify some of these values. Now again, we could also make a bunch of configurations and switch between them, but we haven't really talked about configurations just yet, so I don't really want to introduce that here. So let's just modify these values. Let's make the plate 22 inches, and let's rebuild it. So with 22 inches, our first two patterns update properly, but we're always going to have that set number of instances. In this case, if I modify this value to be 8, and I rebuild, it'll put 8 holes in there. However, the bottom one is intelligent in the fact that it can update the number of holes based on the width of our plate. We only did two nested if statements. We could, of course, take this out to even finer detail if we needed to and adjust the whole pattern spacing at a more micro level. But let's take this down below 20 inches, so let's say 15, and let's rebuild it. And it reduces the number of holes that we have. Now you can see in this specific case, all the whole patterns match. If we take it down below 10 and rebuild it, the original patterns are always going to have eight instances. However, the intelligent pattern spacing with the if conditional statement knows that if it's 10 or below, we're going to reduce it to five instances across the plate. So this helps because as the plate gets smaller and smaller, those holes are going to bunch up closer and closer. So without this intelligence built into the file, you're going to run into a situation where the whole pattern just doesn't work. So using these if statements can really help your functionality in these intelligent parts. Let's go ahead and let's kick this back up to 20. Let's rebuild it. And let's take a look at the performance evaluation. So under evaluate, make sure that we check performance evaluation. And let's take a look at what our rebuild time is overall, 0 0.05 seconds, and what's driving that percentage of time. So our curve pattern, which again is the first one, is taking up 34% of the time. Cut extrude, which is the second hole, is taking up the same amount of time. And then everything else is negligible. The last linear pattern takes a little bit more to calculate, but that's simply because it has more instances in it right now. If we drop down to a situation where it has 5 instead of 12, then it'll take a little bit less time to calculate, such as linear pattern 1. So as you're planning your files out, make sure you keep this in mind that things like curve-driven pattern are very easy to set up in terms of the sketches and the base foundation of that, but they do take a little bit more processing and rebuild time ultimately. So it's always going to be a balance, and if you have something where the pattern is not linear in nature, maybe you have an arc or a line in an arc or even a spline, then curve-driven pattern is really your best option. However, if you're dealing with linear patterns or even if you're dealing with a sketch-driven pattern where we have sketch points, then some of these other options can help and maybe will drop the rebuild time of these large files. We're not quite done with this topic yet. To this point, we've talked about global variables and linking variables. We talked about setting up these patterns based on sketches, setting them up based on equations, and then also doing the intelligent pattern spacing and number of instances. We do still want to talk about a few other things, such as creating the configurations and potentially design tables to help drive these, 
as well as talking about library features. The applications of some of these patterns we looked at are better suited for things like library features, even though they have larger rebuild times, whereas some of these are only best suited for designs directly in the file. So we'll carry on this series in a couple more videos and we'll expand on some more of these topics, but hopefully to this point you guys have learned a few tips and tricks and you'll stick with us for the next couple videos. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.